What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another audiobook preview, or, yeah, preview audiobook. Um, today we are going to be looking at the preview pages for the, technically the f second, but this is, it's titled The First Interactive Novel for Five Nights at Freddy's, called The Week Before. So, for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, we had the interactive novel VIP, and it was really, really good, actually. I really enjoyed it. Um, basically, for, for the past two days, we've been streaming it, and we've been going through the decisions, and we've seen all of the endings and secrets, and I'm hoping to get um, like a, a shorter kind of video out uh, so that you guys can read along with me, etc. Um, but this, this is going to be the first, like, official interactive novel, I guess. Um, as you can see over here, maybe, oh, I don't know if you can see it actually, but, um, it says interactive novel number one the week before. So, this is the first official interactive novel, and I have heard about leaks. I, I haven't seen any leaks, but I've heard this book is insane, okay? This book has some crazy lore, so I am really excited to get stuck into this when it releases on the 4th of September? 3rd of September, 3rd of September. Um, so that is literally less than two weeks away. We are going to be reading this live on the day it comes out, so make sure you subscribe so you'll see that. Anyway, Let's get into these few pages that we've gotten. So we, we have a preview on, this is Amazon India actually. So it, it's gonna be a bit of a weird format. It's literally just images right here. So we're gonna read through what we've got so far and it's gonna be very short, but we're gonna get a little taster of what's to come. So all I know about this one is we are a security guard and we've got five nights to survive the animatronics before they kill us, basically. And a lot of people have theorized this is about Phone Guy, and I have a feeling it is based on things that I've heard about like leaks and the lore being insane from this book. So I'm really excited to know more about what this is about. Um, so we're gonna learn more about Phone Guy, I think, and we're gonna learn more about the FNAF 1 animatronics and just kind of like the state of the um the company in FNAF 1 and it, it I don't know it could like retcon things it could I don't know what it could do I don't know what sort of law could come out of this but really really excited let's get into the first page um ah I see so it looks like we just have a random extract and it starts on page 13 so we're not going to be seeing like the first the, 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 the very first pages, we're going to be seeing from page 13. There is binary up here. I wonder if someone's translated this or if it even matters. But um, that's, that's something to point out, I think. So, you step into the men's restroom and shut the door. The antiseptic scent of bleach still pervades the air, which is far from the worst thing you've whiffed in there. You try to look around, but it's too dark with both lights out. That's why you're here. What are the odds that two bulbs would burn out at the same time? Maybe there was some kind of power surge. After all, the wiring in the building is ancient. That's probably why the cameras always glitch and monitors in the security office keep overloading. That might even explain some of the strange behavior exhibited by the animatronics. Unless you shake your head. You're in the dark when it comes to that stuff. In this case, literally. Just focus on your job, you think. Focus on getting home to Coppelia. Everything else is way above your pay grade. Okay, so here what I'm reading is uh, this is really cool, right? Because we're gonna we're gonna learn some stuff about FNAF One, which is insane because it was over ten years ago now. Um, but you know we've just learned why some things in the FNAF One location work, right? And, and like. That's why the cameras always glitch and monitors in the security office keep overloading. Because there was some sort of power surge because the building, the, the building's wiring is ancient. Um, so we have three options here and it looks like we're going to see kind of the, um, the effects of all of these options. So we can replace the first light bulb, we can listen at the door, or we can inspect the sink. 
So let's um, let's replace the first light bulb. Here we go. Uh, or was that right? No, no, that wasn't right. We're just gonna follow it and see what happens. I'm a bit confused by the uh, the logic of the like the page numbers, but we're gonna turn to page 15 to what was it to replace the first light bulb. How many night watchmen does it take to change a light bulb? None. They refuse to do it because if they chase away the night, they're out of a job. You smile to yourself as you take a detour to retrieve a step stool and new bulb from the maintenance closet. You often make up jokes in your head while you're working and you can't wait to get home to inflict your latest creations on Compelia. I don't know what Compelia is, but that's interesting to, to hear about. She'll groan loudly and say affectionately, uh, she'll groan loudly and say affectionately, bad joke, dad. Oh, it's it's an actual, it's, it's, is it our daughter? Interesting. You remind her that telling dad jokes is a mandatory requirement of all fathers and you never shirk on your duty. The boring real answer to the question is, of course, one. You finish twisting the new bulb inside the socket and say, let there be light as it flickers on, casting the bathroom in its warm glow. That's a quote from God. You be <laughs> That's a uh, quote from Portal. Um, you blink as your eyes adjust from the darkness. The white porcelain urinals and sink are gleaming. This is the cleanest the bathroom will be all day. Once the restaurant opens and kids are unleashed to eat and play, this will quickly become one of the most disgusting rooms in the facility. One light down, one to go. Okay, interesting. It seems like, it seems like this book compared to VIP is going to be a lot more, like even more so decision based, right? And it's going to be actually like trying to survive through the nights. Um, and so that that's very interesting because like here we now have the options to replace the second light bulb because one light down, one to go, or we can listen to the door or we can inspect the sink. And it seems like as we go through this book, if you take the wrong decision at the wrong moment, you're gonna die from the animatronics. Um, and I guess I guess the best outcome here is if you survive all five nights. Um, but there's all there's also gonna probably be things where it's like you get you see William Afton or like you get stuffed in Golden Freddy or something like that. It's it's gonna it's gonna be crazy. This this book is gonna be crazy. Okay, so that was that option. Um, if you listen at the door, turn to page 16. So see, like, the, the, the thing that I'm noticing here is that um, you can listen to the door on page 16 here, or you can first do the light bulb and then go to the door, but that's going to be page 19. So it's going to be a different outcome if you wait to listen to the door. So that's going to be interesting. It's going to feel more like the actual game, which is which is insane, by the way. Maybe the darkness is making you paranoid, but you press your ear against the door and listen. If an animatronic follows you into the restroom, it won't be great for you. There's only one way out. At least I'm in the best place for a person to lose control of their bladder. You chuckle and wince as the sound echoes around you. The restaurant sounds quiet, which oddly makes you feel even more nervous. The darkness seems to be pressing in on you, making it hard to breathe, even harder to think. Your imagination is running wild without any sensory inputs. All you want to do is replace the light bulbs and get back to the security office as quickly and safely as possible. Ah, okay, so here, now we can actually go, like that didn't really affect anything. Now we can go to the light bulb, which is this page, or we can inspect the sink, which is what we initially had the option to do as well. So we're gonna do that. Page 17, plink, plink, plink. That dripping faucet is so annoying, you can't concentrate on anything else. You turn to your right and feel for the sinks as you edge along the wall. When you reach them, you tighten the hot and cold water taps until the drip stops. The sink is filled with water. It appears that something is clogging the drain. You probe it and feel something soft and slimy. You pry it loose and squish it in your fingers. It's slightly sticky. You raise it to your nose and sniff tentatively. Chewed gum. Ew. With the obstruction removed, the water drains out of the sink, gurgling down the pipes. Okay, cool. So have we fixed the sink? We've inspected the sink and we've gone chew gum, chewed gum for it. Is this going to be useful in any way? I don't know. Um, I know this isn't going to be the case, but 
when I hear chewed gum in a FNAF series, I do actually think of Pete's watermelon gum in Step Closer, which is also related to Michael's gum that he always chews as per the survival logbook. But like, I, I don't think that's related in any way. I don't know how that could be related. It's just, it's just a cool thing I thought, cause yeah. Um, so this one page, I don't know. Oh, so at this point you can add your chewed gum to your inventory and turn back to page 13. So that's this page. So at this point, I mean, you can go to the, inspect the sink again, really, but like, we won't talk about that. Um, so we've actually missed out a page, um, page 14. So I'm interested what this page is. You crawl out from under the table and grab it up to pull yourself up. Your, sh your legs are a bit shaky. There isn't a lot on the table. The flimsy white vinyl tablecloth is decorated with colorful confetti. It's disposable, so after a party, the staff can just scoop up all the plates, food scraps, and other de detritus. De detritus? <laughs> I don't know what that word is. And toss it all into a garbage bag. It's wasteful, but faster and cheaper than having to launder dozens of fabric tablecloths post children's birthday parties every single day. Five pointed party hats with different colored stripes are lined up in the middle of the table. Something shiny catches your eye. A foil gum wrapper. Once again, chewing gum. Uh, five pointed party hats. Interesting. It's kind of reminding me of like happiest day, I guess. Um, or just like some of the tables in Security Beach and stuff, but that's not really related. You sigh and slip it into a pocket to discard later. People just leave their trash wherever they feel like it. This wouldn't have happened in the old days, when working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was a badge of honour. The franchise has truly fallen on hard times, thanks to those pernicious per 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 rumours. <laughs> Or about missing kids and the lingering bad press from the bite of 87. Wow. We got a mention of the bite of 87 for the first time in literally like nine years. <laughs> um, but that is true. Like when you think about it, it's, it's always like bite of 83, bite of 83 these days. We haven't really heard about the bite of 87 since FNAF 2 and maybe FNAF 4 if you, if you, kind, if you kind of try hard enough. But like the bite of 87... Is still a thing okay good to know um, so maybe we'll hear more about the bite of 87 at this point uh, and it seems like this is going to be taking place in 1993 when FNAF 1 takes place as well which is cool um, well it is the week before after all if only the victim could tell what he did to provoke that attack but he doesn't talk anymore or do much else so the press completely blew that incident out of proportion and the place hasn't been the same since that makes it a little easier for you to be moving on, but you're going to be a model employee right up to the end. How interesting. How interesting. I, I like how they say, if only the victim could tell what else they did to provoke the attack. He doesn't talk anymore. The press completely blew the incident out of proportion. You don't know that. You don't know that. You know nothing about Fazbear Entertainment, man. That's interesting how they, how they said that. I love how... Um, I mean, what this shows is if this is phone guy, if this is phone guy, it shows that he is biased, right? That's that's actually a very good point. This is um, phone guy's dialogue in FNAF One is is a it's not of a um, what's it called? It's not a trustworthy narrator, right? Absolutely not. So that's that's very interesting as well. Um, how like we we see like the bias here the obvious bias um because he's gonna have his opinions and, and that's gonna flood into the phone calls like he knows about the bite of 87 which is why it's come up again because he's going to be talking to us about the bite of 87 in fnaf 1 so it's like yeah he this i love this this is this is going to be so much fun to read through uh when it comes to it in the first week of september anyway let me know what you think of this so far. Obviously, it's it's only a very small preview and I cannot believe I've got like a 15 minute video out of this. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you see when we go live to read this entire book. We're going to be digging so far deep 
into this book. It's going to be insane. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.